everybody. Real, real good practice. Competitive, physical. Uh, man, a lot of reps. It's just one of our typical Tuesday, Wednesday practices during the year. Points of emphasis today. We're two minute, third down, red zone, both high and low. Some short yardage uh, stuff, some two point play stuff, with that being such a bigger factor now in uh, the overtime scenarios. Also, a ton of the usual stuff the block destruction, the one on one, twos on twos, five on fours, and seven on seven run and pass both, as well as a team pass period uh, in the high red zone. So, really, uh, really pleased with today's effort with guys going out there and taking care of business. Uh, certainly, a lot of guys, you know, after practice, excited for a lot of our players. In the next couple of days should be a really, really good day for the Ducks and their family. So, questions? Let's start with Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Mario, what's the format from the game perspective of rosters? Have, have you figured that out yet? And do you hope to maybe play a full game? You, you know, not sure. I know the first half will be exactly like a football game, whether it be you know, two different teams or offense and defense. Don't oh, know. We're trying to see who's available, who's going to make it. We feel good about playing a real quality game, uh, but uh, not sure exactly if it's going to be two teams or offense and defense. Second half will be a running clock. Second half will be a thud format. First half will be live ball. Let's go to Dennis Dodd. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mario. Um, I wonder if you could explain the – I guess the process and Kayvon going from, uh, you know, his hand in the dirt to an edge linebacker, what the decision was there. And then have you given any thought to what, you know, what it will be like for him, say a year from now when he is at the center of all the draft type we're experiencing now? Well, Kayvon's doing the same thing uh, this year they did last year for the most part. There's some wrinkles in the system and some things that involve him. And just about everything we're doing, uh, he's uh, we feel he's the most disruptive player in college football and he'll be used as such. So I think um, I think sometimes terminology or language causes a little bit of cloudiness as to what he's going right. to be doing. But you'll, you'll see him wreaking havoc at the line of scrimmage. I don't think you'll I don't think you'll be seeing him uh, dropping into coverage anytime soon. Right. right. So uh, but he's been uh, he's been outstanding. He's been absolutely phenomenal in terms of his approach to spring ball in terms of leadership, in terms of encouraging the physicality of our team, you know, both against the run and in the passing game, uh, drill to drill, uh, period to period. He's been, he's been exceptional. And, you know, we're going to challenge him to keep doing that because he could really not only help elevate himself, he could really elevate this football team and our physicality. And, and then, you know, next year, what it's going to be like for him um, in the draft, the way he projects. Oh, I, you know, I think we know he's got a super future. We like to keep things, man, you're, you guys are killing me, man. We haven't played a I season know. yet. We're, we haven't had the 21 draft. We're headed to the 22 draft. Right. <laughs> he, uh, we we feel that he can be the best player in the country. And it's safe saying that because knowing him, he's going to use that as motivation. He's not a guy that allows it to go to his head. He's going to be energized. He's going to take on challenges. He's going to allow us to push him and get the most out of him. So, Big, big future for him. I mean, as big as it gets, sky's the limit. And um, he knows that the sky's the limit for our program. And he's, he's going to be leading that charge. Great. Thank you. You want to get into the 23 draft, too? Since we're go, ahead. Go, ahead, go ahead and get that one in, too. I just want to make sure. I, I didn't want to leave anything out. <laughs> my, my son had an interception the other day. He's up for the I third saw that. draft. So we, we could, you know, we'll do that one. Next that was time. awesome. Great hands. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. Good seeing you, man. All right. Let's go to James Crepia, Oregonian. Mara, how disappointing was it the news the other day of the move to extreme risk and, and no fans, no, no families? Uh, and what impact does that have beyond the obvious uh, in terms of, I realize, again, not open recruiting, but I'm sure there were recruits who were planning to attend. And that, that obviously throws yet another wrench into what was, you treat this as a very big weekend, it always is. Yep. Uh, what is. What does this mean to the program that this is uh, obviously something that's going to be very much toned down all the things that you mentioned are valid points it was uh it was it was pretty brutal to hear that news um you know i know what it's like to go down the street and and see my son play in, in some of those games i know how much that means to me and that's flag football so um to our fans i mean let's call it what it is there's no spring game on the west coast like oregon it's not even close and we haven't seen him in a while and you know how much we love our fans and they love us we wanted to put on a great show in front of them live uh, in person. 
So it was the news was rough. It was hard to take. But like anything else in a pandemic, you're, you roll with it and you go forward. And if it's, you know, we're going to do what's safest and what's best for everybody. So those are the orders. That's what we're going with. So we're moving forward in terms of its impact in recruiting. I think, um, you know, I think what we've done as a program and what we're doing as a program, the recruiting classes being stacked up, the way it's showing up in the draft, the way it's showing up in championships, I think those things speak more loudly than um, than any one event can. So keep our, you know, keep our head looking in our eyes straight ahead and keep working and grinding. We have a lot of work to do. We know how special this team and this season and the future is going to be. So we, uh, we just want to get to work, honestly, brother. That's all we want to do. We want to get to work and keep doing and showing instead of uh, proclaiming. Ryan Thorburn, Register Guard. All right, Mario, I'll stick to the 21 draft since it's here. Um, Panay describes you as kind of a, uh, Panay has described you as a second father. We all know the impact he had on you turning this thing around. You have Noah here, you're close to the family. Mm -hmm. What do you think your emotions will be like seeing Panay realize the dream? Oh, yeah, I think uh, this, you know, certain things when you're a coach, you see them way before they they come in, in a reality. I I can tell you in 2017 at the all poly camp, like I, this day was already envisioned. Uh, just so happy, 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 happy for that family. I words cannot describe because knowing where they came from, the sacrifices that they have made and the type of family they are, that is man, just tap into those old family videos and photos. That's as good of a family as, as good hearted, good natured, hardworking, just incredible DNA, um, incredible human beings. Great. His father, mother, Miss Arlene, Gabe, I, you know, I could go on and on and on. It's just, uh, it's going to be an incredible, incredible moment. Awesome for everybody involved. And, you know, for that family, kind of just the beginning, you know, they've got a They've got a couple sons still out there, you know, with with senior out there, you know, getting his shot hopefully too, and, and Nephi out at Utah, and then no over here. There's, they've got a lot of good, they've got a lot of football ahead of them, so the days will keep stacking on themselves. AJ Jacobson, rivals. Coach, when you look at back at last season, some of the defensive statistics were down from the year before. Um, what have you, and then you brought in Coach DeRuiter, obviously. What, and he installed his stuff. What have you seen this spring to make you think that this defense is going to uh, go back to the, the tra trajectory it was on? Yeah, you know, last year that was, a, we experienced a considerable drop in our, our run defense, you know, and then of course uh, points allowed in total defense. And, you know, you, you take a good hard look at what you can do to get better. And you don't blame a player, or any coaches, you know, you put upon yourselves as a program, all of us, and that's how we've approached it. There's certainly a lot of things that we could do, especially in the form of how we call it and the way we align in certain formations, uh, how we disguise our coverages and how we play our coverages, what we're teaching in terms of um, eye discipline, body position, relative position, all those things. And when you bring in a, a coordinator like Coach DeRuiter, who's seen all that stuff and has had great success against a lot of the teams in our conference, um, a lot of things come to light that, that you're going to be able to apply that should make a really significant difference. Um, and the most significant difference is us doing a better job coaching the physicality and demanding more physicality and our players demanding more physicality from themselves. It's always going to start up front in the trenches when it comes to defending the run and knocking it back. And we've gotten we've made up a lot of ground in that we, we've we've really pushed and, and encouraged and driven and, and, and kept just bringing this thing on harder and more intense as spring practice went on. We feel like we've gotten some really good results. We want to build on those as we watch this film, go through our walkthrough, and then play on Saturday and then carry that over to the offseason. So, um, again, work to do, but in terms of the scheme, the alignments, the assignments, what we're teaching from an eye discipline standpoint, um, some of the calls, the way we pressure people, the way that we bring our stunts, our angles, and STEM, there's just a lot of stuff and a lot of changes that have just, we feel, made us just a, a, better, a better unit. Max Torres, Duck Digest. Coach, uh, as we head into the spring game here, just wanted to see if we get a, a, a health update on your on your team. Uh, I know Justin Flo is a guy that we're, we're looking to, to maybe see soon, Dante Manning. Uh, and how do you feel about the health of your team heading into this weekend? You know, I think we're we're healthy enough to play a spring game. We're going to be healthy for the season. Will some guys be unavailable? Yeah, typically in spring you'll see some of that. But the two guys you just mentioned, 
you know, they uh, they've gotten back recently and they played more and more snaps each and every day. They are they are exciting to watch. Those guys are explosive and difference makers. So them, along with a bunch of other guys, are going to get their turns and opportunities. It showed today in a big time way. We had a team period called team period next man up where after each play, we had a certain guy on each side of the ball have to step out almost like, OK, this happens, whether it be an injury helmet off next man up and the way guys stepped up and made plays at all positions because we had a substitution at every single level uh, I think is very indicative of not only the guys you mentioned but the rest of the team and how they've approached spring ball with a purpose you know they had a goal but they attacked it with a purpose and it showed up today in practice Eric Scopel 247 sports I know you said you haven't decided on format, but what's, I guess, the, the goal in terms of splitting reps at quarterback? Are, are you hoping that Anthony gets gets a certain share and then the guys behind him get even share, or is it going to be trying to be split evenly amongst all four? We'll figure that out tonight and tomorrow. You know, Anthony will get the bulk of the reps, and then the other guys will split them up for the most part, and then we'll reconfigure this, evaluate, and go in the summer and have a plan as well. So, but And when you have a competition where everyone's alive in it, you want to keep everybody alive. And get an opportunity. So that's what we'll do. I wouldn't uh I wouldn't read much into it until we're getting close to the fall and closer to game one. And um, I'll do my very best to give you like exactly what the rotation is in. Let's go back to James. We focus a lot obviously on the top of the depth chart, Mario, but how much of evaluation comes in, especially on Saturday for for the twos, uh, twos on offense, where a lot of guys on the line, for instance, didn't get a ton of playing time. Twos on the defense, where you have guys competing either for starting jobs or, again, didn't see the field a lot the past couple of seasons. So how much of evaluation really is, again, it's always about the ones, the ones, but for evaluation purposes, it may be even more so for the twos. Well, it's a great point, and that's what the whole entire spring is about. What you'll see is a blend. You'll see a lot of twos in there with the ones or guys that are perceived twos. You keep it as an organizational thing so that it doesn't uh, mean anything except that you're competing. You'll see guys that have been working with the threes, working with the twos, and some of them might even get work with the ones, depending on availability. So you're going to see guys get opportunity. We've evaluated. Uh, I'll, I'll get the numbers logged up by the end of the weekend so that you get an idea of how rep intensive our spring practice has been. And when I say rep intensive, I'm talking not only from a team um, standpoint from offense versus defense. I'm talking from all the unit work as well when it's seven on seven, nine on nine, five on four. You log a lot of reps and you're going to see that same blend on Saturday to make sure we get the best chance to evaluate how our twos can fare against the ones and whether guys that have been working as threes or maybe even fours can work their way into the two deep. Go ahead, Ryan. Mario, uh, what have you learned about your team over 13 practices now that maybe you didn't know or weren't sure about a month ago? That we want to be really good. I felt like we – maybe I kind of knew it, but wanted to see it shown by the guys and the way that we approach things. And, and just really, uh, you know, just in a day and age where, you know, there's so much, I guess, uh, talk, you know, you want to be a part of an organization that, is about action and wanted to see it put into action on a daily basis. And we want to make sure that how we do anything is how we do everything, applying it to how we meet, how we walk through, how we handle our academics, how we handle ourselves off the field. Those were the things that we wanted to see. We want to build discipline, right? We want to make sure that we're not a team that's jumping off sides, all right? Or that's, you know, avoiding pre-snap penalties. Still got some work to do in that department. Um, want to see how physical we can be. We made some strides. We still have to make more progress in that area. So I think we've taken a significant jump and we must take another one in the off season in the summertime. Matt Preem. Mario, so many times uh, people watch a spring game and get excited about that performance, but it's also just one of 15 practices that happen for you. Um, how much do you weigh what happens in a spring game against what happens in the 14 other days of practice? Yeah, well, with your way, since you're, you, since you, you know, and everybody around the country, right, you work on certain things and come to spring game, you're vanilla because why would you show that? Why would you give somebody else an advantage, right? What you want to see are guys playing hard with great technique and fundamentals and understanding exactly what we're doing, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it that way. And that's got to show on tape. I mean, 
at the end of the day, football's still about blocking and tackling and throwing and catching and running and all that stuff. And, and that's got to show up, you know, guys taking good angles to the ball, guys making good tackles, guys running their feet through contact um, and playing hard, you know, playing a certain way and setting a standard for how we play the scheme itself. And what you use, I wouldn't, you know, there's some things that we've already done that you'll see. Um, but overall, I wouldn't put much stock in that side of it. I wouldn't put much stock in that side of it as it relates to anybody in the country. But, you know, we are going to play football and we're going to play competitive football. For us, there are no waste downs. There are no wasted days. This is a big, big practice for us. A tremendous opportunity for us to get better. And that's how it's going to be approached, just like a game is. James? I have one uh, Panay question for you, Mario. Back uh, a while back, you'd said that his recruiting process gave you more gray hairs than anything else you experienced in your life and almost caused cardiac arrest for you. Well, now that uh, he's at this point, can you expound on what about that recruiting process was clearly extremely stressful? Uh, it, just, it was a position that had to, you know, every team is built differently. We, we felt, I felt, we needed a, a left tackle. And when you get one of those, I'm, I'm sure you'll see in the NFL draft. I mean, you've seen it for years. You've seen it for a long, long time. How that position, like any other game changer position, has an impact. Well, that was one that where we were going to be going and the type of quarterback we were going to have and the way we were going to run the football was going to be just monumental in terms of being able to change things and change things early, not develop over the course of two or three years. So, so that might explain, um, you know, it's important, man. You know how it is. I mean, there's positions on the field where if you, you you sign a great wide receiver, guy could probably come in and play right away. They do all the time. Offensive linemen typically a little bit more time to be prepared, be ready to mature physically well enough to to be effective. This guy was uh, this guy was going to be ready to go, and uh, and he was so awesome stuff. Got time for a couple more for coach. We'll go with Dylan of Ducks Digest. Coach, there's a couple guys on the defense that are kind of adjusting to new roles. Um, one of the big headlines early in spring was Kayvon um, playing more of a true outside linebacker. And then Brian Addison is uh, getting reps at uh, corner. What have you seen from those guys adjusting to those roles? Well, the same thing we mentioned earlier about Kayvon. Kayvon's playing the same position he played last year. It might be named different, but same assignments, same disruptive nature of his position. Um, probably added more things to what he does. Brian Addison was played a lot of safety in high school and had practiced with us at safety before uh, where there's a need at that position. Um, he has done really well in practice and at wide receiver, we have some guys that have something that done really well also. So it bodes well for us from a depth standpoint, uh, Brian can really put himself in a position to compete for a starting job. I think he's pushing to try to do that. And he needs a, we need a really big game out of him on Saturday. Our last question for coach will go to Eric Scopel. Coach, you talked about some of the impacts of no fans just from a recruiting perspective, but how about just on a personal level from a player perspective? I know Anthony was talking about wanting his, his parents to be out here and they were planning on coming and, and other players said something similar. How tough was it seeing them kind of have to make those changes last minute? Well, it's always tough. You know, it's always tough, but I think if you focus on how tough it is instead of on what you have to do, you're going to just keep talking about how tough it is. So it's not, it doesn't make us happy. It's not what we want, you know, but Maybe it's a reminder to everybody. Let's take care of our business and, you know, beat this virus and be smart so that we can have a packed Dotson. That's what we want, right? I mean, that's what we're doing. Let's let's also everybody work like crazy to make sure that we, we raise enough money and, and donate enough food to, to shatter the record, right? And food for Lane County. I think, what is it, $1 is equal to three meals or something like that? We could knock it out the park and, and make this into something really, really good and focus on that, so... I'm with you, brother. I, I don't like it. Uh, it's it's with the amount of people that want to come to our game. And I'm going to go back and say it again. There There is no spring game on the West Coast like Oregon's. It's not even close. So to not have it two years in a row, it's uh, it's something that, you know what? Let's use it. Let's be even better. Let's create more excitement by having a great year. Let's sign another top class and let's make next year's spring game the biggest extravaganza we've ever had. Let's just keep rolling. You know, let's just keep going forward. Coach, thanks for your time today. All right, guys. Thank you. You guys have a good one.